Well, Lori Smith owns a company called 303 Creative in Littleton. She wants to make wedding websites, but not for same-sex couples. She and her attorneys claim that Colorado's anti-discrimination law violates her free speech rights. Now her case has gone to the U.S. Supreme Court. Joining me to discuss the case is our 9 News legal analyst, Whitney Trailer. Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. Yeah, thanks for coming in. All right, so this is similar to a 2018 case that involved Masterpiece Cakes. He didn't want to sell wedding cakes to gay couples, but it's a little different, right? It is different. It's, yeah. it's a similar situation in that this is a website developer that doesn't want to. She hasn't actually developed a website and refused to serve uh, LGBT people. But she said if she does weddings, which is where she's going to, she's going to she doesn't want to have to do that for same sex couples. And the 2018 case was similar. But the Supreme Court, who ruled in favor of the baker, mm -hmm. ruled on a very narrow uh, premises and said, look, the, the state treated this baker unfairly, essentially. And so it just applied to really that set of facts. So here there is some precedent, but people are expecting that 2018 case to really answer this issue of whether this is free speech or whether this is a protection for LGBT, and they didn't. So this case, everyone is expecting the Supreme Court to do that. And obviously she wanted to, to uh, file this lawsuit uh, to, to figure out the precedent in this case because no, no gay couples even asked her to create a website yet, right? That's exactly right, and that was actually Clarence Thomas's first question. He says, is this case ripe? Meaning, are you the appropriate plan? because you hadn't refused it but what she was saying was look I don't have a problem with LGBT folks I've I've served them in the past but doing it in a wedding cake where it's an expression about uh, what she believes is between a man and a woman she's saying that goes against my religious beliefs and that's what really uh, the case is boiling down to so there's a lot of people that think since the court is so conservative that they will rule in her favor if that happens could this open the door for say uh, you can't serve interracial couples or you can't serve uh, mm -hmm. um, you know couples uh, other other types of couples right you know there in that was a bunch of hypotheticals that the justices threw out there if there was a black Santa and a mm -hmm. kid with a KKK uh, outfit came in or if it was a Jewish and a non-Jewish person and they got married and the photographer didn't want to take those photos so the the court got into all of these hypotheticals and essentially the plaintiff's lawyer said look a lot of those are extreme cases this one isn't extreme this one's sort of in the middle and a lot of people disagree with that because they say look if you open the door here you're certainly going to open the door on interracial and interfaith and all these other things for people to refuse and this is the argument is if you open your doors to the public you need to serve those people who come in from the public. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Do you agree with the, the those that say the court's so conservative that that's probably going to happen? It looks like that's what the court is going to do, that they're going to rule in favor of the, uh, the photographer. And then the question is going to be, will you start to see these little incremental changes in terms of these civil liberties and civil rights for LGBT folks, for interracial, for all of this? So this is really going to open... Um, Pandora's box, if you will. Yeah. And, and it won't end, though, because these cases, so the Supreme Court, they look at the issues of law. But because there's so many minor factual differences, you're going to see multiple cases go to the Supreme Court. And then you'll have a body of law and sort of have some parameters, if you will. But this is the first of many, so yeah. we'll have to see. All right, yeah. Whitney, good to see you. Well, it's Thank good you. to see you, and this is our last interview. This so, is the last one. You know, I formally, know. yes. So, Gary, I just want to tell you, I'm a native. We, we grew up watching you, and it's, it's just so, um, it's been a pleasure to work with you Thank and get you. to know you as, as a professional. But I'll, I'll tell you, growing up, with, like we heard, you know, your voice or Barbara Walters or Ed Sardella. Aww. I mean, you, you have that voice, and so. That's so sweet. Taking us through all of that, keeping us calm. I just want to say, uh, as a viewer and uh, as an analyst, it's been a pleasure. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you to say. Yes. Michael Hancock once told me he remembers when he was laying in the crib. <laughs> Hearing, <laughs> hearing my voice. I'm going to say I was at least a teenager, so <laughs> you got me through some tough teenage years. Right. So. 